All right, can you cut that? Testing, 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 testing. Can you just testing. mute it? I know, but I'm like, what? I don't know, I'm getting the call confused. Why? I don't know, it's like sensory overload. For what? Because I'm talking, I don't know. Are I you drunk? Like, no, <laughs> no, I'm just. <laughs> Is it the amount of coffee you had? Or Probably, what? actually, that because I had a shit ton of coffee this morning for the match, and then I had a bunch of coffee testing, at testing. breakfast, and now I'm on my second soda. Oh, oh that's why. Testing. Yeah, here we go. You're on Aaron's anxiety level. Welcome to Two Dollar Steak, a pro wrestling podcast. I am your host, Aaron Varnum. Joining me today, we've got a fit of the giggles. Uh, Big Mike. Yes. Tolbert. Yep. And Cookie, who can't even look at the microphone without giggling. <laughs> My, Cookie, you okay? You okay, little buddy? It's Darby today. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. We we actually have Big Mike. Yes. Tolbert. Oh yeah. And Darby Allen. I hate cookie life. Darby Allen. <laughs> I was trying to think of a cookie Darby Allen like I hate life pun, but I couldn't think of anything. Cookie so, was late because he actually skated. No, no, the whole it's, way here. it's Darby. We have <laughs> Darby. to call him Darby. <laughs> the Darby count today. <laughs> so Darby, um, how was your Halloween, Darby? Yeah, it was silent, and sad, just like my life. Uh, is he really little, like little emotional little like that? Like, <laughs> I, I don't like, know. I hate your life, but he, he actually does like talk very quietly. Like, in the, I listened to him in an interview. He was like, "Yeah, let me tell you about how I was homeless, sleeping in my car, <laughs> and then I met the love of my life." His voice does not go past a certain. Priscilla range. Kelly. I was gonna say, is the love of his life pain? Yeah. <laughs> pain, and then the second love, Priscilla Kelly. When she pulled out her tampon and used it as a weapon in that match. <laughs> That's her? That was her. That was her, yeah. Oh, Disgusting. Gross. How long did it take you to um, dress up as Darby? Because you were giving us updates and the rugby Halloween party was almost over. It took we like drunker four, drunker. 45, 45 minutes or so. It took you 45 minutes to paint half of your face? Did but you yeah. paint your face or did you uh, let the girl do it? My girlfriend. Girlfriend did it. Was she like... Did she know anything like what you were doing? She, she, I explained it to her and I showed her who he was. And did any, her, like, a did anybody out know who you were? Nobody. Okay. <laughs> Nobody knew. They were like, are you a skeleton? I was like, no. Are you that turtle kid? <laughs> uh, no, I never. I think, thankfully, I didn't get a, skele- or a turtle kid. But <laughs> they're like, do a kickflip. I had. It, I basically had my phone open on his picture and I was like, here, this is who I am. And they were like, oh, you did good. And I was like, yeah, I know I did. Yeah, I, cr- I crushed it. <laughs> I, my my friend's uh, son, Michael Jordan's son, actually dressed up as Darby as well. So oh, did I, he? Yeah, yeah. So y- you weren't the only one. Hell yeah. That's I'm very up, excited that, that people are once again dressing up as wrestlers that aren't the same three wrestlers that everybody dresses up You know up what? As. I, well, I saw one of the three. Macho Man Randy yeah, Savage. Yeah, it's either night. Macho, it's either Flair. Hulk, Hulk, or Flair. Flair. Yeah, I've seen a lot of Flair, too. Yeah. There we go. Like... Nice. Yeah, you know, <laughs> solid. Do you have a Do you have a full picture of you as Darby? Because we only got like weird selfie, yeah, yeah photos, yeah. like really emo selfies. <laughs> just just text it to me. Oh. I, I want to tweet it out. We're gonna tweet that out. Oh, yeah. Also, oh, yeah. not only did we have Darby Allen, but we had uh, we had Mr. Bang Bang himself, Cactus Jack. Bang bang. <laughs> that's <laughs> all. That's all Tolbert can muster. That's how I'm feeling right now. Tolbert, two days later. <laughs> two days later, and Tolbert uh, is still hungover. Yeah, I was hanging out with this big idiot right here. That would be Big Mike. If anybody, <laughs> yeah, Forrest Gump. I was Forrest Gump. Yeah, yeah we, and uh, you were drunk, and you tweeted out. Uh, you get a free pack of cards for whoever can guess it, and you literally have Forrest Gump like written <laughs> no, on says, your head. It says Bubba Gump, and you know what? Nobody uh, the the contest is over, and nobody tweeted <laughs> at me, so nobody gets the cards. You don't get those twenty thousand dollars, right? <laughs> so, so tell Wait, me what? Can I can I preface? Hold on, Tobert calls me an idiot. Where I walk up to Tobert at one point, he's like, "Tequila? You want to do a tequila shot?" <laughs> and then he hands me a tequila shot. Mm, so that's yeah, that's yeah. Tobert's fault. That Tolbert, I, I I started that train. Yeah, <laughs> Tolbert rode that wave, and I was just kind of there too. I mean, I've definitely seen Tolbert's. Uh, I've seen Tolbert's dark side a few times. You know, going uh, to concerts with him and stuff like that. We went to a uh, Oakley Dokley show. It's a band that dresses up oh like God. like yeah, we, we Ned heard, Flanders. We heard right. the story on the right. podcast, but. It, that night, he was making us do uh, white wine spritzler, spritzer uh, 
shots. My, my thing is we my, were just chugging white wine, wine spritzers that night. Do you not were. remember that? Oh, I remember that. My favorite, <laughs> my favorite thing about Tolbert is I feel like this podcast has like opened him back up to wrestling and you know his childhood. Uh, drunk Tolbert loves to wrestle, and <laughs> I, I saw him take a ch- a chicken to the ground. Um, I don't know what move oh, that was. You bulldog, bulldog him. A yeah. bulldog. Yeah, he did it. A bulldog, and then he went for the pin. Oh, did you get man. the dub? Did you get the win? I did. Nice. I did. Nice. I forgot about that. Yeah. Did you? That's did you, how you won the IC t- or the hardcore title. Yeah. Did yeah. you hook the leg? The chicken leg? He did not. No, he just laid across the top. You didn't I, hook the I chicken leg? I did the flop across the top. He yeah. did make a point to take his elbow and pin the arm down, though. Nice. That's good. That's nice. good. We have video good somewhere, technique. so we'll post No, that. no, we definitely have video. Uh, Davenport, what did you dress up as? I didn't dress up as anything. Like, my costume didn't, didn't get here on time, so I threw on my romper. And boots. <laughs> so Davenport was Davenport for winning uh, for Halloween, and, and so uh, uh, no, there was there's actually two Davenports. Uh, oh <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought that's what Nikki did. The, there was two Davenports downtown, so I didn't dress up, but my girlfriend dressed up as first date me in Daisy Dukes cowboy boots and a t-shirt or a rugby shirt, and she put on a mullet, and also bought the um, the sunglasses aware that, that I call the dumpster snakes. It was very classy. She did it well. Did. So I was actually on that first date. I was there yeah. that day. <laughs> yeah. So she actually nailed it. And it's like she would not tell me what she was going to wear. And she was like, fine, I'm going to dress up as a shark. I was like, I knew it. <laughs> and then like I went over to her house to pick to go downtown. And she, uh, she, I see her pick up her clothes. And I'm like, is she going to dress as me? And she comes out. And I'm like, oh, my God. You fucking nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> Davenport, what did your girlfriend say when she heard Cookie uh, bring up the beer fest stuff last week? Oh, gosh. She- <laughs> tongue in tongue, dude. I think she would she see you or Mike. And she was like, oh, beer fest? Yeah, she called really? me. I, I was like, I, I, didn't, I wasn't part of any of this. I was like, none of that is true. And then I guess Tolbert vividly remembers it because he was You guys sober. were gross. <laughs> 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 Well, that is something. <laughs> this is uh, this is uh, getting out of hand. So everything. There's been a lot of stuff happening this week. We had Halloween. We had a Halloween party. Uh, Tolbert and Mike went rogue for the first time in a long time. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember half the night. And then I was talking to my coworker at Cape Fear last night, and I was like, "Hey, you know, typical that." Do anything stupid last night? Were we cool? Did we pay tabs? Did we cause any trouble? And they just kind of giggled. They're like, no, you guys are fine. You had a great time. So, you had a great time. That's, uh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. They said uh, we were silly. <laughs> so they were basically your paid babysitters that evening. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, our our, our uh, loyal doorman, longtime doorman, uh, Josh, was like, yeah, Mike's just big. Yeah. <laughs> when he's drunk, he's just big and drunk. <laughs> <laughs> what does that even mean? He just takes up a lot of space and kind of <laughs> just wobbles around. Me, yeah. Knocks over Oh, that's things. that's like the time that that Mike tried to kumite me in the middle of the street of uh <laughs> he tried to kumite you. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we were we were going at it in the middle of the street. Yeah. We were kumiteing in the street and he fell on his ass at some point. Yeah, I have really good balance until it get a little in me. So he he was wobbling around and I'm holding up the hardcore title. You know, trying to challenge any takers, <laughs> setting up tables on the bar, and, you know, grabbing chairs. We and contemplated putting Tolbert through a table, but Aaron wasn't at the Halloween party. Oh, I would have been neither so was Cookie. Down too. I would have been so down. I would have been so mad if that happened without me there. I know, and yeah. that's why we didn't, because we actually care. By the way, Cactus, you and I, we have some unfinished business. I was looking for you. I was going to have a straight up hardcore match. With I was, I'm, I'm coming out tonight with the makeup, and I'm calling <laughs> you out. Been, we would have been on. It's going to be shots. a lights out match <laughs> in yeah. the middle of downtown. It's going to be a lights out uh, match. Only if Tober, beer, beer and wine. Only if Tober brings a sock full of thumbtacks. <laughs> yeah, we just get pepper sprayed by WPD <laughs> three minutes, three minutes into it. It's like no, <laughs> no, we're, we're messing around. I promise. We're having fun. <laughs> that black man's attacking that white man. I hate crime. Hey, that was the reason why I didn't come down with the full face paint because I didn't want to be driving down the street and I also didn't want to scare the Lowe's food cashier when I went into Lowe's food. There's a large black man with half of his face painted and wearing all black. He I made- think I saw this once. That's a gang. That's a gang. Send back up. What are they calling Jigglos? <laughs> I, I know it. Oh, someone said, are you a gigolo? A juggalo, juggalo, juggalo. And you you could have said yes. I could have. Yeah. You, you could have said whoop, whoop, whoop. whoop. <laughs> no. 
don't want to be associated. Especially with the video that De- Davenport sent me earlier this week. I showed that to Haven, and Haven literally almost threw up. On what was it? The toe sucking clown? Or yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. It was a juggalo oh, sucking it. somebody's toe. Did I miss this link? Yeah, it was yeah, God. It was awesome. <laughs> it was like flip flop the clown or something like that. I don't and know. And flip flop like to suck on toes. <laughs> That's, so disgusting. That's disgusting. <laughs> All right, so last week we had our 30th episode. It was our biggest and best episode biggest we've best. ever had on $2 Steak. And guess what? This is going to be even bigger. No, I'm just kidding. I'm and just the kidding. 31st episode is going to be our worst episode. Yeah. So there's things called ebbs and flows. And we ebbed, and now we're going to flow, or we flowed, and now we're going to ebb. Yeah, anyway, we're pulling it back. We're bringing it back. Yeah. We, uh, so this week, um, one, I, you know, we, I sent out the, the rundown like I always do. And um, we usually record on Sundays. That gives an extra day to procrastinate and push back the watching of your match. Uh, Tolbert is out of town tomorrow. Yeah, I'm going to Durham tomorrow for uh, Maddie's birthday, my sister-in-law. Cool. So we're heading out early, going to brewery hop and day drink and I don't know, just have fun. Well, it's fucking up our recording schedule. And yeah. So because of Tolbert, this episode is going to be... Especially crappy. We have got three <laughs> matches this week. No relation. No relation. Uh, the, the three matches are very short. Uh, it took two hours past our uh, our start time to get us up and running for this episode. So let's go ahead and uh, get it going. <laughs> First match up, we have got the Greenhorn, no longer known as the Greenhorn, Big keep, Mike. Keep saying it. <laughs> I know, because it's in the rundown. I just copy and paste it. This is nothing nothing against you and your lack of wrestling knowledge. At this point, you know wrestling. All right, so we've got AJ Styles versus Samoa Joe. Yes. Big Mike. So AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, May 13th, 2007. That's a TNA match. Our very first TNA match. Yes. Um, and I was actually pretty excited when you said it was Samoa Joe AJ Styles. I didn't know when. I thought it was going to be like a WWE one because they had that big run like a year ago. Right. Um, but then that wouldn't make sense because we don't do modern wrestling. So well, we do every we're, ish. We're, today we are doing a modern wrestling. Um. Game. So I anyway, like I knew that these guys had good chemistry and all that sort of stuff. So I was excited. Didn't know this was their very first match that they had done. Right. Um. And they don't really talk about too much of the lead up. Uh, commentary does, and I have no idea who's on commentary. For oh today. God, it's Mike Tanay, and who was that guy that yelled all the time? Oh, weird, uh, ki- oh like a weird oh, voice. Ha! Yeah, yeah, I know that exactly was it. What you're talking about. Um. Anyway, so. <laughs> So they have the um, the entrances, the phenomenal AJ Styles. So he still has that kind of moniker. Comes out short hair. I like AJ Styles with short hair and a five o'clock shadow. Does not look like the White trash super Socks. church uh, youth, youth pastor. pastor. Yeah, yeah. He he definitely doesn't. And I, I like the way he looks. He's obviously, I mean, this was 12 years ago. So they both look a lot younger. Uh, Joe comes out not as big as he is now. Um, but... <laughs> He also has short hair. So now Joe's kind of losing it a little bit, but he's got the curly look. Um, and he comes out, and I made note of this. So Joe comes out in his towel that he normally always ca- carries around his, his neck. A lot bigger 12 years ago than it. I don't know if it was if it was the <laughs> style. The towel, the towel, the, 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 the towel is large. Bigger. The towel is large. Um, it's a I, bigger towel. I, I like the small towel, Joe, because it makes him look even bigger. Yeah, I like small towel Joe. Yeah, too. and, I, and I just a small towel Joe <laughs> <laughs> living in a. Lo- oh, <laughs> and I was sorry. waiting. I was waiting for the joke chant, but obviously it's different music. But uh, it comes out. This is my first, or not? When AJ came out, was my first glimpse at the ring. Is an octagon, right? Uh, hexagon. It is, it's, it's a hexagon. Hexagon. Yeah. Um, and I remember this. So I've never watched TNA matches, and I remember this though. Because when I was, so 2007, I was a senior in high school, but I remember, how long had they been going on? A couple. TNA had been going on technically from like early 2000s. But they were on like Spike TV or something. Yeah, so this was, I think, the first year that they were on Spike TV. I remember like scrolling through and like seeing it and I was like, oh, cool. I wonder if this is like Stone Cold and The Rock or something like from when I was, uh, and then it was like this weird ring and I turned it off immediately and that was a vivid memory I actually have from years back. Um, But I didn't like it. I don't like the... I hate it too. Triple A has the same thing, right? 
Uh, yes. So the first time I ever saw a live wrestling match was uh, at UNCW, and it was a um, it was an offshoot of TNA. It was called UWF, and they had that ring. And it it's seeing that ring in person is very it's weird. Yeah, uh, and and it's and it's just an awkward shape. And I feel like, I mean they utilized it well. Both guys kind of you know made use of the space because you get extra space, right? Nah, no, it's, I don't. Know. It looked bigger. Um, but anyway, let's get to the match a little bit. Uh, it, like Aaron said, it was a quick match. I didn't really you know write down too much stuff. Um, AJ Styles is phenomenal. He's he moves well. He flies around. He's very athletic. He, you know, not so much. I mean, this was 12 years ago, so he was probably in his early 30s, right, back, back then? Yeah, he, he was probably 40 he's, at the time. Well, well, he's like 40 now. Um, yeah, he's like 42 or something, so he was probably so, 30. So still, and he still moves well now, but like he was just flowy, kind of smooth. A um, little bit reminded me of like Hangman Page now. Like right. where he's kind of this, not, he's not a lanky guy. He's like a little stocky guy, but he's just doing well, landing on his feet, all this sort of stuff. There was a couple cool spots. One, Joe throws AJ towards the ropes, and AJ almost like he like grabs the top rope and shoots feet first out into the the you know ringside area, and then Joe does a suicide dive, and I thought that that was good. Now nowadays everybody does a dive, um, and it kind of takes it away. But I don't were were they not no, doing it? That back? was that was, and this was kind of like the start of that era yeah. when people started doing the suicide dive more. Um, so I really like that, um, especially bigger guys. You can see yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I mean. Like it. Joe, you know, they they were billing him at three hundred um, when he when he was doing it. So that looked really good. AJ, they do this one spot. AJ hits an inverted DDT on Joe. Yes, uh, really really cool. I I've, I don't think I've seen. Oh, I don't think I've seen one of those since. <laughs> that? that was me hitting my wedding ring on the table. <laughs> Okay. I got really excited. Um, Is that going to make the shit list? No. Okay. Um, and then, again, I, I'm a, I really like Smo Joe still, right? Because he's right. good at talking. Uh, and we, we were going to talk about this a little bit earlier where I feel like they overutilize his ability to get his heat back nowadays. Like, they always build him up. He's always in these, like, big name matches, all this sort of stuff, and they always have him lose. It's like, that's not the way it's supposed to be, right? right. Um, so when he got the U.S. title a couple months ago, I thought that was really cool, and I thought they were going to do something with it, and they never actually did. Um, but I really like Joe because he's also got the psychology that we've referenced a lot, a couple episodes, where you know he's going to he's going to know your strengths, know your weaknesses, and kind of get in your head. So late at the very end of the match, um, Joe like plays like he hurt his knee, like he he's, throws AJ into the not corner post, but the we'll say post. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how. What, what, One it, of the turnbuckles yeah, over there. One of the six. One yeah, of six. He throws him into the, the thing, and he's about to do like a running charge at him. And he like falls down and hurts his knee. So that AJ could then go up and try to do some fancy move where he twists and flies and all this sort of stuff. Hits the ground because Joe rolls away, gets up, goes ha ha. Basically, my my knee's fine. Puts him in a coquina clutch and then does a some kind of slam with the clutch. I don't know. I don't. I wish he would do that nowadays too. Well, I, sometimes less is more in WWE, and they build up to those moves a little bit more. True. I know but, what you're talking about. But it's. Though. I think the 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 chokehold into the slam was way more like visually right. and impacting than just him choking somebody. Right. Out. Uh, but anyway, uh, Joe uses psychology, gets the win. It's a good match. Final thoughts. Great match. Great I really match. like it. Um, I don't think any of their matches in like that they did last year during that entire run were as good as that one. Really? Uh, I mean, maybe I just don't remember them or didn't watch all of the them. The build was well, weird. The, and it was, it was, the build was weird. They kept playing on, like, Wendy and yeah, he's going like, to be your, his kid's daddy. and <laughs> it, That was a little weird. And then it was... At the time, I wasn't watching SmackDown. I was only watching Raw. So I didn't really, I guess, watch many of those. But the pay-per-view ones, they were good. But I, I don't know. I kind of liked... I mean, they were younger here, so they you know could be a little more athletic. Speaking of SmackDown, you were the only person other than me to be able to watch what happened last night. There was I caught the last hour. We yeah, and I did too. I caught the last hour. What did you think about Daniel Bryan and Adam Cole being able to get thirty minutes on broadcast television? Do you think uh, it was a good match? It was. It was a great match. I think they utilized the commercial breaks a little too much. I mean, there was yeah. like three or four commercial breaks in a 30-minute match. Right. Um, but, I mean, the same thing. That was the first time that those two had gone after each other. Um, and it was a great match. Um, I mean, Adam Cole is phenomenal. 
Um, and, and so is Daniel so, Bryan. So is Daniel Bryan. And, dude, they were – I mean, actually, I, I forgot to mention this. In the Joe and AJ match, they were throwing some stiff punches and stiff kicks. And same thing last night. I mean, Daniel Bryan wasn't holding back. And neither was Cole. Right. Every time every time Daniel Bryan takes a shot to the face or the neck, though, I go, oh. I think WWE cringe. was able to take a bad situation and – did the best they could with and it. And do the best they could um, with it. Yeah, I mean, and everything. I was telling Amanda, she's like, like if, if this seemed, visually it seemed different. And well, I, like, well I said, Amanda, I said half the production team is still in Saudi Arabia. Like that's That includes cameramen and directors and yes. all this sort of stuff. So like it was, it had a different vibe to it. The commentary team did great. It was Tom Phillips, Renee, yep. and Pat McAfee, at least for the last hour, mm-hmm. which was awesome. Yeah. Um, that was pretty cool. And then, we'll watch a little bit after we're okay, done with cool, this. Cool. It is pretty neat. The, for, for having to throw it together, I think they did the best they could have. I didn't watch the beginning hour, so I didn't see any of the, the Brock Lesnar stuff. Mike but. was watching football with me. He was at the Legion Stadium with me for that. Yeah, I was watching uh, you know, high school referees botch calls. Yeah, it was pretty bad. <laughs> it was terrible, it, terrible. There was There was a couple oh, really yeah. bad calls last night. Anyways... Mike, let's get to your social media update. Uh, social media update. We got a little more act. We were both pretty active this week. Again, I'm going to shout out our handles. It's at the number two dollar steak underscore on Instagram and Twitter. Um, you know what? Vader's son runs Vader's Twitter. Uh, always good for a like. You t- always You good. tweet at him that about his dad. He gives you a like. Now, if he actually watches our content, I doubt it. Um, but then also what I tweeted out... We dropped the episode early, and so that we actually got some good traction on Monday with that. Uh, I tweeted out again on Wednesday before Dynamite, and I used Travis's art. Um, and we didn't get a ton of views, but we got a ton of clicks off of the views we did get, which was kind of cool. Um, oh, it's Travis's art this week. Was it was, what a, it was it great. Was phenomenal. It, it is my all-time Abdul favorite. Abdullah the Butcher having been electrocuted in the chair just laying there or sitting there was, was great. It, it is the Perfect. most visually arresting thing that we've had for... Uh, again... Best episode, best art. Travis, you are the man. Um, but yeah, so Instagram did. You had some pretty good work on Instagram Thank too, you, right? Mike. Thank yeah, you. yeah. We every time I I, kind of, <laughs> I scroll through, you know, I see a, we've gotten a bunch of likes. I'm like, oh, I wonder what Tolbert posted. So we did pretty good there. Do you have any comments on your Instagram posts? Uh, no. <laughs> do, do you remember what you posted? I do. Okay. I remember uh, posting cookies, uh, Alan selfie, and me rolling around varnish. <laughs> doing my best Cactus Jack impression. Rebellion. Um, rebellion, not Varnish. Yeah. You didn't go to Varnish. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't go to Varnish. <laughs> uh, yeah, a few other things. Good, good to hear, Tolbert. Always <laughs> a pleasure to hear Tolbert's part of the social media update. Yeah. 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 Uh, but that's it. You know, we're, I mean, we're, we're actually slow. So, again, I've not been making a big push to try to get followers. We're, we, we creep, we're creeping up. We had one, um, I'm pretty sure it's like... Um, we had a retweet this week. We had, we had a retweet. Um, well, it's because I retweeted his yeah, thing yeah, and tags. But uh, no, what are those like weird, like fake robot sex things? A sex bot? Well, like like that have handles and stuff. Because a, se- so, a sex so, bot a sex with bot handles. With handles. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we got followed by one of those. I did not follow that back though. Thank God. <laughs> you should have tweeted at her. This isn't wrestling. <laughs> That's great. I totally forgot that I used to do that. Yeah. Um, I might have to start doing that. That was your whole first like week shtick. Was, this isn't wrestling. <laughs> this isn't wrestling. Yeah, you know what? I, I'm going to get back on that train. I totally forgot. You know, th- this podcast flies by and goes quick and things change so fast. I forgot that whole thing. How many yeah. followers are we sitting at? On 214. 214. <laughs> nice. So, no, we've been at uh, sub 210 for a while now. And what are we at? What, what's Instagram at? Let's see. Uh, uh, 93. 93. For the last week and a half. <laughs> Well, I mean, ninety-five. Nice. I'm, oh, two right. more. What? Two of those are sex bots. <laughs> <laughs> one's one's just got handles. <laughs> it's a sex bot with handles. <laughs> Mike, uh, you seem very relaxed and calm this week. Did anybody make? Uh, some the shit list. Some people, some companies, and some things have made the shit list. <laughs> All right, let's let's oh. let's get to it. Big Mike's <laughs> shit list. All right, this week starting off. Uh, this was early in the week. Seth Rollins decided to do a tell-all interview about how he's really annoyed by wrestling fans who don't like him. They don't understand how the kind of work he puts in, and they don't understand why he was getting booed. Cookie, uh, what are your thoughts on Seth Rollins? Oh my, I hate Seth Rollins. <laughs> who is Seth Rollins? Let's ask that question. Does anyone know who Seth Rollins is? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And uh, yeah, so this is a conversation you know we've been having for a while, uh, um, several months now, and it's actually starting to get traction online too. People are just like, "Who? Who is he? What does he do?" Um, and you know, 
that was kind of the thing we kept, you know, close to heart because we didn't, you know, we thought everybody else liked him too. But apparently, people are starting to turn on Seth Rollins, and he doesn't like it, and he's being a baby about it. We should burn it down. Uh, well, we'll build it up it. first. We'll oh, architect yeah. it up. <laughs> We'll Wait. slay the beast that is Seth Rollins and burn it all down. Burn it down. Uh, Seth Rollins, you've made Big Mike's shit, shit list. list. All right, next on the shit list, uh, and this is probably a cheap pop shit list thing, is is the whole WWE Saudi Arabia thing. Not not even not even the shit that happened after the show. Oh. The fact that they just like hype it up and like the one thing that really annoyed me is the women's match. It's awesome and it's great that they got to do it right first time ever. They built it all up like it was going to be this big, huge thing, and all these women are really proud. And I don't doubt that you know little girls are going to look up to that, especially in that country. Right. But it's so full of shit. The whole thing. The country, the the match, the whole crown jewel thing is just all full of shit. Saudi Arabia is a terrible country. It is. Um, they murder people left and right. And it's just... I don't know. I can't get into it. And every time I see an ad on, like, like watching SmackDown, they did this whole big thing about it yesterday. And I, I literally looked at my wife and I said, "This is so stupid and full of shit." So wait, so Saudi Arabia or Crown Jewel? <laughs> well, I don't want to say Saudi Arabia because they'll send a hit squad to my house. So I'm going right. to say WWE <laughs> and their Crown Jewel event made my shit list. All right, so WWE and their Crown Jewel event, you've made Big Mike's shit, shit list. list. All right, the last thing on Big Mike's shit list, you boys uh, were witness to it last week. Davenport got to see it today. Aaron's pull-up bar. Aaron has oh, this no. stupid pull-up oh, bar. Oh, it's gone now. Oh, it's gone because I hit my head on it again. Oh. Aaron has <laughs> one doorway going from his living <laughs> living room into his dining room into his kitchen and he had decided to put a pull-up bar there which effectively lowers the threshold of the door by about eight inches to a room that everybody goes into <laughs> yeah but nobody's six four and so nobody else hits their fucking head on that no, thing. we're fine we're fine with it yeah anyway his pull-up bar made my shit list uh aaron's pull-up bar you've made big mike's shit list <laughs> have you improved your ability to do pull-ups yet yeah I, i'm up to four now why isn't it in the doorway of the other room or something like what? that because the don't ask questions. Yes, definitely. I figured out why it's in the doorway to the kitchen. It's because he does a pull-up every time he goes to get a snack. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Okay. Well. It's, it's not true at all. <laughs> he it's just ducks true. under it. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> ducks back under I, it. Literally. <laughs> why did I put this thing here? <laughs> Haven came over and washed clothes this week, and the clothes that she could not dry clean, I like put in the dryer. She put on the, she put on the pull-up bar. So it's also uh, a, a dry rack. A dry rack. There you go. Yeah. An expensive drying rack that I hit my head on. All right, for our strong style matchup of the evening, Cookie, you've got Lance Archer versus Evil. I tell you, boys, when I woke up this morning after I pissed excellence, of course. <laughs> I didn't. Sorry. Wait, 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 sorry, wait. I'm, I'm doing sorry. that voice. I'm doing that voice time again. Out, no, time out, time out, Flashback time to last out. week. Uh, excuse me. Darby <laughs> Allen this week has got Lance Archer versus Evil. I didn't imagine that being watching. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that voice the entire time. Anyway, I didn't imagine I'd be watching a, a Lance Hoyt match. Right? Lance Hoyt. Now, for those of you who are confused, Lance Archer used to go by the name of Lance Hoyt while he was in TNA. Nothing much amounted from it. He was a part of a few horrible tag teams. And after he disappeared, I thought he quit wrestling to work at, like, your local Denny's or something like that. A little do I know, Lance Archer now strolls down the rampway with a braided mohawk. Never seen that before. And he just starts punching and kicking the ringside. <laughs> I thought it was the ringside crew. I guess it's, like, it's the, the young, young lions. Yeah, it's the young lions. <laughs> So he just starts punching and kicking the ringside crew and just keeps saying, everybody dies. <laughs> everybody dies. <laughs> I love him so much. Yeah, I love his music. I dude. love him so much. <laughs> for, any, for everyone at home, his theme song is called Everybody Dies as well. And I guess he's living his gimmick right now. Anyway, knockoff Undertaker, or I'm sorry, Evil, uh, with the scythe, comes strolling down the aisle. Maybe I shouldn't say that, but before... I, before I see him wrestle, but similarities are definitely there. He has a long jacket, right? The purple lighting, right? The gong and the steam music, right? And the slow stroll to the ring. And he also has a teddy bear that apparently you can buy with a scythe. With right. a scythe, yeah. Because they kept cutting to people in the audience. 
One guy was like praying to the teddy bear, and another girl was. It was yeah, amazing. It, it was, was great. Weird, but all right. Um, we got du- Jushin Thunder Liger on Ju- commentary. On commentary, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, boy, something told me this was going to be a match that had me on the floor laughing. And the first sign of this was when they just. Uh, it was after they started ramming each other directly, like after the match started, they just right. started running into each other. Archer goes. Hit me in the fucking face <laughs> twice. <laughs> I feel like that's something you say like after you hit a rail of fucking coat. Just oh, God. <laughs> hit me in the fucking face. God. Hit me. <laughs> I definitely think he's coked up. Now. I agree. Anyway, I digress. Here comes the countdown. Cookies top four number one. Big Lance Archer. I remind everyone at home is six foot eight. Now I'll preface this by saying most big men can't or shouldn't fly off of the top rope apron, what have you. Now, I've only seen a handful of big men complete a moonsault. Bam Bam, 6'3", Vader, 6'5", Luchasaurus, 6'5". None of these men perform the move outside of the ring. Right. Big Lance Hoy, or I'm sorry, Big Lance Archer hit a moonsault from the apron to the outside. Was it the prettiest? No. But did the coked out giant tuck his head in his chin? You bet your ass he did. Did, did he tuck those knees so high up? So and do his- high. It was he good. Did- it looked he good. Did, he did not want to decapitate himself on that apron. No, he just wanted to decapitate the young lion. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, Tolbert, a word of advice. Uh-huh. Chuck your chin. Uh, uh, tuck your chin. Tuck uh, your chin. Always. Tuck your chin. Tuck your chin. Always. All right. Uh, Number two. That superplex from the top row almost killed Lance Archer. <laughs> yes. He literally rotated at the last second. If he didn't rotate, all his weight would have been dropped on his neck. Right. We would have another Daniel Bryan episode. And I think so, too. Yes. Yeah. Number three. Archer bashes his head into the fucking chair. He jam- oh, so, he, so he jams a chair in between two turnbuckles. He Irish whips evil. Evil stops in time right before the chair is the chair spot. Archer charges at him. Archer rams his head straight into the chair, and that was followed up by a lariat. Pretty nice spot. Uh, yeah, th- that was a, a, it was a nasty spot. He's, it was a nasty spot. Number four. Holy shit, it must be 1973, and the Von Erics must be in town because yes. Archer beats Evil with the claw. That is his, his move. He he's li- from Texas. I, thought it was, I, I, didn't, I didn't put two and two together until I heard it again. I was like, he's from Texas. It makes sense now. He literally grabs the skull for people at home and just starts squeezing his skull, pins him down for a three count, and he holds it on there for a good minute. But I don't know what's funnier, Archer intimidating the commentary team intimidating the commentary team by making them say everybody dies right at the very end or the fact that they put an ice pack on evil's head after the claw <laughs> like come on no oversell is the is the ice really helping if i squeeze your skull give the man some ibuprofen come on now <laughs> cookie jesus how did you like the match honorable mentions oh, oh honorable honorable mentions. i always forget about honorable mentions it's Arch- a work in progress Archer pulled yeah, no, uh, Archer what? pulled off a suplex onto an exposed turnbuckle that I thought was a pretty cool spot. It left Evil folded in half, and it looked pretty disgusting, to be honest with you. There you go. Uh, and then second, the pounce. Like, yes! The old Monty yes! Brown move. Monty Brown. I forgot so much about Monty Brown. Yes. This is our third TNA reference of the day. This might be a TNA episode. It's uh, not. It's, it's a callback to TNA, a wrestler by the name of Monty Brown or Marcus Corbin in the WWE. That was a oh horrible gimmick. He was only there for like a cup of tea. Two months. <laughs> He used to use Cup the pounce coffee. as his finisher, which is basically like a shoulder tackle deliver, deliver it to the lateral side of a person, basically. Um, but I digress again. My cookie count. This cook, this match was a little one-sided. I give it three and a half cookies. Oh, that's fine. Or sorry, three and a half Darby's. Three and a half Darby's. Now, Cookie, did you uh, <laughs> did you gain more respect for Lance Archer? I did gain a lot of respect for Lance Archer. There's a really good match, and we should I, I might assign it down the road. Lance Archer and your boy Will Osprey have a match that's one of the best matches. Please, is is please that the, the one you showed me? Yes. The, it, uh, that was the, recently, right? Yeah, that, this is the same is, G1. This is the G1, and he won the G1, correct? Didn't Lance no, Archer? no, 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 no. No, he no, didn't? No, oh, I thought he won the no, G1. No, no. no, that Osprey match, though, that was the first and probably the only Lance Archer match I've seen, and I was like, dude, I like this guy yeah, a lot. Dude. He just yells the, he, he yells the F word. So much during his <laughs> oh match. That's why I love New it's Japan, awesome. man. It's awesome. I, I, he's so good. He is. He is. He's really progressed from TNA. Oh my god! god like, and I, and this everybody was saying that this G one was kind of like his his coming out party as a new threat in New Japan, and yeah. he he's been kind of on a a, a roll since then. So, really? yeah. Oh yeah, that's what's up. I'm the booger.
All right, for our uh, high spot, uh, Tolbert, yeah. I assigned you the one, two, three kid, Sean Waltman, against the Bastion Booger. Oh, oh, and a booger he is. He's <laughs> he's scary, kids. Yeah, he's uh he's big. He's gross. And uh, he has an interesting choice in outfit. <laughs> yeah, how well. would you describe? I was gonna say, <laughs> oh, can you man. explain that to us? So it's like a it's like a onesie, right? But he like has a singlet, these, yeah, a singlet with like side cutouts. Yeah, side cutouts, and it like crosses these straps, and like they go under his giant man boob flaps to kind of highlight I, them. I, I'll be, I'll say, I was really disturbed watching it when he was first walking out because I thought, I because th- it. The lighting made it look like it was um, like the color of his skin, yeah. well, and I thought it was yeah. just this tiny little singlet, yeah. and I was going to be even more disturbed by that, dude. Yeah, and he's got like a major like m- moose knuckle thing going on. Oh, yeah, that, that's the first thing I noticed. And it's just and it's all flesh colored, like all the. So uh, it's just it's gross. What's, what's it's his gross. music? What's his music like? Yeah, what is what's his music? music, dude? I can't even remember. It's just burps. Is it was it burps? burps yeah. It's just burps and farts. Oh Jesus! And, and which like, you know, ten year old me yeah. would have ate that up and loved this. Guy. Well, there was a lot of kids in the crowd. This is right. old school WWF. This is Saturday morning or uh, Saturday. Yeah, it's night. from like ninety three. Yeah, yeah, it's one of those jobbing show. Like where they they're just having a bunch Studio of squash show, matches. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so there's a lot of kids. So they're booing, getting really into it. The commentator is just talking about how much he stinks, and how gross he looks, and. He rolls into the ring and there's this camera shot of him like drooling. <laughs> it's <just laughs> disgusting. It, it wasn't even drooling. He, he like to work visually, it up. yeah. yeah work, you see and him working it up out. and like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm just so talking nice. to uh, how much he stinks. <laughs> Boogers and farts. <laughs> I like this guy. Oh man! So one, two, three makes his way. Um, everyone goes wild. Kids love him. They're doing the one, two, three chant. He's 19 years old, man. He is. He's skinny. Uh, he's 19 yeah. in this match so he's got uh, he's got like the ratty mullet going on he's got like the long skinny mullet going on um, but looking uh, looking athletic in small just so small <laughs> so small <laughs> yeah. uh, but the kids love him they're eating it up he makes his way to the ring really energetic looking like he's going to get the win uh, they go right into it with Bastion just pretty much beating the shit out of him um and it's an obvious mismatch. You can tell this is going to be a squash match right off the bat. But he uh, gives it his best shot. A lot of martial arts from One Two Three Kid. You can tell he maybe trains a little bit. That's kind of like a shtick. And that was a big deal. Back yeah, I was going to say that's why the kids are into it as well. That time, everyone's like into you know taekwondo. All, yeah, all that. I took yeah. taekwondo. No, I took kempo. That's yeah, what I took, taekwondo. Yeah, I took some form of Korean martial arts. I don't know. Some guy taught my neighbor's basement. <laughs> like, charged my parents forty bucks a month. Did he take pictures of you too? No. Did no. he touch you? <laughs> <laughs> I got a certificate <laughs> for being might, a good boy. You might want to look back at that certificate. <laughs> but uh, so we see some good offense from one, two, three kid. But at every turn, uh, he's just kind of either scooped up and slammed by the booger or just, you know, left in a heap. It's Mr. Point, booger. Yeah, Mr. Booger to you. Uh, there is like a fart spot that was pretty funny <laughs> where he like farts and like wafts his tights. And uh, I think, is it, is it JR on the mic? He goes, oh, the fumes exuding from his trunks. <laughs> At one point, he Irish whips one, two, three kid into the turnbuckle really, really fucking hard. And just, I don't think he quite expected it because it just left him on his face <laughs> and uh, yeah. damn near broke him in half. Um, we see one, two, three, go off the top rope a couple of times, get some good offense, gets the crowd hyped at one point stuns the booger. It looks like he's going for a moonsault, right? But booger dodges it and just plops right on top of him, uh, and pins him. Uh, one, two, three kid does get some, uh, some two counts in, uh, in, during the match. One is really funny where, uh, <laughs> Booger tries to kick out of it and he just kind of like bumps him with his belly. <laughs> he doesn't actually kick out of it. He He's got a very large belly. belly. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny, but, uh, yeah, obvious just like good guy versus bad guy match. And I think they have uh, been wrestling together, uh, at that time for a while and traveling together. And there's actually a lot of matches on YouTube and stuff of him. Do you uh, like the Bugman? 
I, he's gross, but I liked him. I like his wiggle, his wiggle dance. This, this uh, was a weird time, man. The mid '90s, there was yeah. like a Boogerman video game that I used to play on Sega. Like, he we liked weird popular. things. Yeah, he was pretty popular. He had a he had a good run. He he wrestled a bunch of people. If you go on YouTube and look him up, there's tons of matches. But they're all like five minutes. He yeah. can't. He, he was yeah. not a. a but it was he, just he that, couldn't do thirty minute match in a pinch. No, but it was he, just he, that he, there are no Broadways from from the book, yeah, man. But also, you look at one two three kid. He doesn't have any muscles or anything like that. It was a weird time for wrestling. But he can work. If you're, yeah, if you can work, you're in there. So. All yeah, right, so uh, now it's time for the Boogman Haiku. All right, this is the best I can come up with today, kids. Oh, Jesus but Christ. I'll try harder next time. All right, week. I'm ready. Oh, man, what's that smell? <laughs> One, two, three, looking for the pin. The booger wiggles. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I accept it. That's a, that's right, a decent right. haiku. Folks, thank you for listening to this week's episode of $2 Steak, a pro wrestling podcast. This is the quickest and shortest episode we've ever had. No really? way. Uh, yeah, 100%. This is the shortest episode we've ever had. Uh, next week, we're going to start up our theming. We're going to have um, either Survivor Series or Starcade. I don't know yet. I'm going to look at the calendar, and we're going to get to it. Let's do Starcade. You want to do Starcade? Survivor yeah. Series just doesn't really do anything for me. We're going to have Old a Survivor school. Series match, <laughs> though, bro. Survivor Series. we got to do a Survivor Series. you got to get a gobbledygooker in there somehow. Mm, I don't even know what that means. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You'll find out. Yo, you... We'll find out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is Darby signing off uh, to the Two Dollar Steak Podcast. Who knows if I'll return? I'll see you guys on the other. My show. panties are so moist right now. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Two Dollar Steak. Uh, tune in again next week for another phenomenal episode. <laughs>